I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's webcast. Well, we have David Brennan with us again today, author of book, The Israel Omen. Gary Stearman is here, and we're going to have a great time discussing some of the fascinating facets of this book. David Brennan, welcome to Prophecy in the News. Thank you, Garrett. It's good to be here. Good that you can share a little time with us. Thank now, you. let's get right to it. In your book, The Israel Omen, you link uh, a number of uh, modern catastrophes, weather-wise, uh, to, believe it or not, to negotiations concerning Israel. You know, there's a whole cabal of forces today that want to dismantle modern Israel, and every time they try, something terrible happens. And these are all documented in the Israel Omen, and we've talked about them with David, and I hope you've caught our other broadcasts, by the way. But this time, David, I want to talk with you about what I consider to be the greatest earthquake of our age, the financial earthquake. And there is something called the LIBOR OIS spread in banking, yes. and it controls the health if you will, of the financial institutions in our country. And it, it recently experienced a great change. Tell us about that. That's right. And um, Gary, what happened is that, well, first let me explain what it is. The LIBOR OIS spread is essentially a premium charged by banks to lend money to one another overnight. Interbank lending is critical to the healthy functioning of the banking system worldwide. Mm -hmm. If a bank is running short on funds, they go through the international banking system and they get those funds so that they've got enough to pay all of their obligations. When they have a surplus of funds, they will loan money on the international exchange. So it's critical. It's the lifeblood, essentially, of the banking system. For a bank to be cut off of those funds would precipitate a crisis which is exactly what caused the financial crisis. We know that in the middle part of 2007, the banking system began to shutter worldwide. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that the premium paid typically was running for years and years between six and eight one-hundredths of one percent as a charge. That's a tiny charge for mm -hmm. borrowing the money overnight that was critical to their proper functioning. Right. But what happened on July 26, 2007, is that the LIBOR OIS spread, the premium, began going higher. And it didn't just go a little high. It went from an average of 7 one-hundredths of 1% 1 to 364. Now, you write that, statistically speaking, this is a bombshell. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Statisticians that took a look at this said that it's considered a, a sigma 6.2 event. That means, to, to translate that into English, that means it's an event that should take place once every 6,800 years or hmm. 2.5 million days. But it happened specifically on July 26, 2007. Now, why is that so significant? Because on July 23rd, 2007, just a, a three days from when the banking system began to collapse, is when Tony Blair, the quartet's envoy, went to the Middle East on the express purpose of finding a way to remove the land from Israel. In other words, to create a Palestinian state. Now, you talked about the quartet. That would be the United States, United Nations, European Union, Russia, uh, the quartet, basically the global power right now. That's and, right. And they're uh, crying out for peace, peace, peace. And the way to make peace, of course, particularly in the Middle East, is to dismantle Israel. And you document in your book that every time this is tried, a catastrophe ensues. That's right. And, and, and it's not just that. Now the fact that we're able to connect each of these efforts on the part of this quartet, the U.S., Russia, European Union, and the United Nations, to catastrophes as they try to divide the land, what we're seeing is that the prophecy of Zechariah, the four horns of Zechariah, are coming to life in our very day, right now as we're speaking. We also see how Zechariah spoke about horns in the plural, when he talked about the four horns, the four political powers, 
And then at the end of his passage, he says that lifted up their horn, singular. And it sure seems like he's identifying specifically and in detail the actions of the quartet acting as one horn. Wow. Wonderful book, J.R., an yeah. easy read. That's what I like about it. It just flows right along. I, yeah. I keep saying that uh, David has the pen of the novelist and the information-gathering power that he's been, been given by being led of the Lord. Yeah. And it's 221 pages, 1595. You can order it from us. I hope you will. The Israel Omen, the ancient warning of catastrophes, has begun. Now, there are some folks who think that the catastrophes that will befall the world will happen only within the seven-year uh, tribulation period. Not so. We have seen the move to divide Israel, to cut the heartland out of Israel and give it to the Palestinians, to take the Gaza Strip area. Do you remember back in Bible days, that area belonged to the tribe of Dan and the Philistines That's would right. not let them have it? Mm -hmm. and deprive the tribe of Dan <clears throat> of their inheritance. And so it's happening again. This time, the word omen here means you don't mess with God's promised land. God's going to slap you down. He's going to beat you up. He's going to destroy you. And that's what we see during the tribulation period. Well, in the tribulation period, we learn that the quartet succeeded in dividing Israel. John goes up in chapter 11 of Revelation and he, he uh, sets out to measure the temple and the Lord says, don't measure the court of the Gentiles. It's given to the Gentiles for three and a half years. They'll trample it underfoot. And that's what we see also in Ezekiel. When Ezekiel is about to see the second coming of Christ, he looks across the temple mount. He sees a wall built between the sanctuary and a place they call the profane place. That, to me, that's the Mosque of Omar. And so we have a division of the Temple Mount and a division of the land. We have a Palestinian state. And, by the way, in the middle of the tribulation period, the Antichrist comes along and drives the Jews out of their land mm. and take over the whole thing. Yes. And the Jews are left out in the wilderness. Well, listen, this is a fascinating read. I want you to get it. You can order it from us. Just call the phone number, 1-800-475-1111, here at the office, and our secretaries are standing by. We want to send this to you. It's 1595 plus shipping and handling. And your purchase of this also will help us to stay on the air and uh, take care of, of uh, thousands upon tens of thousands of friends across the world who follow our prophetic studies. Gary, final word? Well, a final word would be, now we know what Zechariah was talking about as you come to the conclusion of his book, Zechariah 12, 2, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about, when they shall be in siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. You could almost say that's happening now, couldn't you? It, it is certainly happening now, because the siege is represented by the effort of this quartet, which, by the way, is pulling the world together aligning the world against Israel and against the Promised Land. Mm. Well, we certainly enjoyed reading your book. Glad you could be with us here at Prophecy in the News. Thank you. Yeah. We want to thank you for watching today. I want you to tune in again tomorrow for our analysis of the news.